today I'm going to talk about implicit conversions inside SQL Server. Query tuning is a huge subject and implicit conversion is a very small part of the query tuning ocean, so to say. I want to do this video in two parts, part one and part two. In part one, I will talk about the basics and I will show you a demo on how it affects your query performance. And in part two, I will show you some more advanced demos. So let's first understand what exactly is implicit conversion. Now, when you're comparing two data types inside SQL Server as part of your query or a workload or inside you have written some code in a stored procedure, whenever you are comparing these two data types, SQL Server has to uh, compare and SQL has to, before comparison, it has to make sure that they are of the same data types. And if, for example, if you're comparing a small int to a uh, small int data type with an integer data type, SQL Server will uh, compare small int with integer, but before the comparison, it has to convert small int to integer. And now the question is, why will it not convert an integer to a small int? int? Because of the precedence. Now, small int is, um, uh, has smaller boundaries than integer, which is understandable. So the precedence is always from the lower to the higher. And uh, uh, of course, in uh, books online, and now we call it as Microsoft Docs, uh, uh, Microsoft has put down a, a very nice chart as to from which data type to which data type implicit conversion can uh, happen. Now, conversions can actually happen in two ways. One is implicit, which means SQL Server engine, the query execution engine will do it automatically. That is one way of doing it. Only if that is doable, because not all data types can be implicitly converted to other uh, data types. And the other way how it can happen is uh, explicit conversion. When you use functions like cast or convert and you explicitly tell SQL Server to convert from a particular data type to another data type. So explicit conversion is obviously better because implicit conversion uh, will, uh, has uh, SQL Server has to automatically on its own figure out which is the right data type to uh, uh, convert. And uh, that might cause uh, query performance issues, which means there are basically two issues that I've seen. One is uh, the index performance due to implicit conversions. Indexes might not be used effectively. And the second is uh, CPU uh, cycles are consumed when you uh, do implicit conversion. So this is what I'm going to show you in today's demonstration. And before I jump into the demo, let's um, go and uh, just quickly two or three slides. If you wish to stay connected with me, you can subscribe to this exclusive distribution list, Connect with AB. Members of this distribution list are people who have watched my videos or read a blog or even attended pre-cons or a session at a conference. And I also have uh, members uh, from all my master classes in this distribution list. So yes, uh, this distribution list is pretty exclusive. The link is available in the YouTube uh, description. You can also follow me on Twitter, A underscore Bunsen. Let's get uh, started with the demo now on understanding implicit conversions. Let's get started. I'm using AdventureWorks 2012 for this demo. And um, let's turn on statistics, uh, time and IO on. Uh, these two uh, will uh, give us, in fact, I'm not going to use much uh, IO here. So let me just turn off IO for the time being. I only need statistics time on so this should be turned on which this will help me compare the execution performance and here is a simple query we are uh, joining two tables uh, person dot person and um, uh, we have the other one as customer so yeah sales customer um, sales dot customer and person dot person and we're filtering on account number now if i take the cursor over account number you can clearly see that account number is actually uh, varchar uh, data type and the text that I give here is also varchar but just to show you now for the purpose of demo I'll put n here which will make this as a unicode value and now what SQL Server is going to do SQL Server will implicitly convert uh, this uh, uh, when we are comparing two data types here from uh, uh, varchar to nvarchar so from the lower precedence to the higher precedence there will be a conversion that will happen and this will affect uh, a bit of uh, cpu performance so there will be cpu cycles required for this so let's go and execute this uh, simple query select and and i will also turn on actual execution plan before executing the query and now i will go and 
execute the query. The query runs pretty fast. In less than a second, you get the output, so all good. Let's go and look into the messages tab. And in the messages tab, the first thing that you are going to now note that CPU time is 94 milliseconds. So it does take some CPU cycles. And I can tell you this is for the implicit conversion uh, that's happening. Uh, and why am I so sure? Because I've tested it with uh, without the conversion also. So I'm going to do that in a moment. But before we do that, let's go and look into the execution plan. In the execution plan, your first attention will go on the select operator there. The select operator has uh, this uh, symbol, uh, the exclamation mark there, which means it's a warning. And uh, of course, uh, whether you are a developer or a DBA, you have to first go and look into the warnings to see what is SQL Server trying to tell you. And when you go and look into the warnings, it's uh, pretty evident there. The warning says, um, let me go and quickly highlight this as type conversion um, expression, convert implicit and so on and so forth. And this may affect seek plan in query plan choice. So as I mentioned before, there are two things that can happen due to implicit conversion. It might affect the choices of index. So whether you're seeking, uh, it may not seek and it may scan. So index performance is an issue. And the second issue is CPU cycles, uh, which I just showed you that it uh, takes extra CPU cycles for this implicit conversion to happen. So this is bad for performance. So what should you be doing? Uh, you should be doing explicit conversion. That is uh, one and the other is uh, fixing these conversion issues. So here the fix is very simple. Uh, we do have a habit of working with Unicode data all the time. So we really don't see that might be a legacy database is still working on Varcad. So let's go and just quickly remove this n prefix from here. Th then we are comparing um, we are comparing varchar to varchar and there is going to be uh, no conversion. And now when I execute this, let's go and look into the performance. You get the output. And when I see the messages tab here and it's all zero milliseconds, right? And this is what you want to see, which is now really negligible CPU cycles have been used for uh, this operation. And even in the execution plan, there is no warning. So implicit conversion um, has not happened and this is uh, good for performance. Now, we are saving about 90 milliseconds here. So you might uh, wonder, I mean, is it is it really that big a deal by trying to fix every millisecond and try, trying to score a point with every millisecond? I think it's a big deal. The reason being, uh, I'm running this single query in isolation right now. And um, think about, um, 100 users hitting your SQL Server and trying to run such workloads with implicit conversions. And if you add all of that up, um, you can uh, probably calculate the amount of CPU cycles you will save. So your mathematics here could be that hundreds of users hitting SQL Server and running such workloads a dozen times. And you can see the mathematics. And in order to prove that to you, I can do a very simple test here. I can actually uh, just run this one and I can just, let's say, go 200 times. You know, let's do this. And uh, the same query is going to run 200 times and we're going to see how much time it takes. Uh, and first we'll see how much time it takes with implicit conversion and then we will see how much time it takes without implicit conversion. And let's go and uh, I'm going to turn off the actual execution plan because it takes uh, some time to even generate the plan every time. And I'm going to convert the results. I'm going to um, ex get the results in a text, not in grid format because rendering on grid also takes time. And now here is our final test. Let's go and execute this uh, workload 200 times and we will record the overall execution time. Boom. And it's running now and while it's running, keep watching here about the amount of milliseconds it's taking, sometimes 70, sometimes 100, sometimes slightly more than 150 and sometimes it even touches 200 milliseconds. That's what it takes and we are running this workload 200 times. This is just kind of a very basic simulation that I'm doing. You want to do more advanced simulation, you can use RML utilities and with RML there is a utility called OStress. Using that, you can even simulate 100 users running this workload 100 times. And um, that will be even uh, better uh, in terms of uh, real-time performance comparison. So we run this for 200 times and uh, the execution is now done. 
and uh, I don't need to really show you that you can see 147 milliseconds, then 140 milliseconds, and so on and so forth, right? That is the time being taken for uh, the implicit conversion. And now when you look at the time, the overall execution time, this has taken about 37 seconds to complete. Now, we go and fix the query. We don't want implicit conversion. So I'll just press backspace there and run this 200 times and now I have fixed the query. So note your numbers. Uh, in the first execution, it took 37 seconds and now we execute it without implicit conversion. And let's see how much time it takes. And you will be surprised. It should finish in less than 10 seconds. That's what I'm expecting. Yes, it does. And it finishes off in seven seconds. And that's pretty amazing. So now look at the amount of time you have saved in terms of performance and of course CPU cycles. That is pretty evident. If you just simply multiply 200 by an average of let's say 100, you have saved that much time. And here you can clearly see you have saved more than 30 seconds in performance. So something like a workload that took about 37 seconds overall as a batch uh, now takes only seven seconds. And if you scroll on the time there, it's all zero milliseconds everywhere. And this is really what you wanted to see. So implicit, implicit conversion is definitely not good for your SQL Server. And there are many other many different ways on how you can actually fix this um, going and looking into the execution plan, even trying to find it out from the plan cache and you can actually shred the uh, plans in XML and and actually search on the string convert implicit. You can find it that way. You can also use extended events and um, I don't remember very clearly, but there is an event uh, which is um, plan effect implicit um, or plan effect conversion, something like that. There is an event and you can even filter on uh, that event and that event can trap all such uh, workloads. So yeah, there are many different ways on how you can identify and then uh, go ahead and fix it. So let's let's uh, call this as part one and maybe I will record another demo where I will try to show you uh, the extended events and uh, let's say explicit conversion and you know maybe um, uh, even even trying to shred and uh, the plan cache in xml and trying to figure out all the plans that have implicit conversion inside them so i'll try to show you these three things as part of a second demo hope this was useful and there is something new learning uh, there hope the demo was useful and you have learned something new here are a few bullet points about me in short i have been working with sql server since 7.0 it has been more than 20 years and I still love working with the product. Uh, there is a URL there, sqlmaestros.com slash Amit hyphen Bansal. Click on that and you can read and learn more about who I am and what my work is. And you can see a few pictures from our last year's conferences. More than um, 1000 people uh, join Data Platform Summit each year from more than 20 countries. Microsoft product experts from Redmond, India, China, Israel, Dublin, uh, MVPs from more than 16 countries and industry veterans. They deliver more than 100 breakout sessions, open talks and chalk talks at this conference. We have exclusive learning formats like even roundtables and hands on labs. And um, if you're serious about Microsoft Data Platform and SQL Server and the complete Azure stack, this is a signature event that you should not miss. You can visit dps10.com to learn more about this conference, which has been promoted even by media and uh, online websites as one of the largest community driven learning events of Asia. Well, then thank you very much for your time for uh, watching this video. I hope to meet you again soon in another video.